Hi, my name is Eric Artea Cruz. I am from Ecuador and I am the co-coordinator of the People's Health Movement Industry Circle. So we wanted to talk to you about uh, the relationship of climate and health, but we wanted to talk to you through how do the PHM Extractive Industry Circle sees the, the, the problem. So the main axis of our work is analyzing it through extractivism and how it is supported by the capitalist development model. So extractivism is a mode of accumulation that favors extraction of natural resources as minerals or petroleum or fossil, fossil fuels, uh, commercial farming, forest, fishing industries from countries of the global south that export the resources. The extractive project began to be structured with the conquest and colonization of America, Africa, and Asia. And the, de the defense of people's health in the context of extractivism is a concern shared by activists involved with the people's health movement in all the continents that we are uh, active. We uh, linked this uh, uh, interest in analyzing the extractive uh, industry because we've seen in each of our countries, if there is a place of extra for extractive industries, even if they are carefully controlled. Uh, there are some questions that we put it to the debate and is, for example, is the financing of national health systems with revenues derived from activities that intrinsically destroy life compatible with the right to health? In other words, if we um, build like a lot of uh, health services, right, which has been happening in my country under the progressive government, if we build like a lot of health services, but these health services that are mainly in the main cities, um, these health services budget comes from oil industry. Is this defending the right to health? And that takes us to the development model uh, questioning because um, all of this um, in these years, no, right? They're, they have positioned like, we should be developing, we should be develop, develop, uh, developing as the developed nations in the global north. But uh, this development does not warranty the protection and the right to health for all. What we want to say with that is that um, this question is at the core of uh, our work in, in Latin America, but also uh, in um, the left wing or right wing, it doesn't matter, the governments that with emerging geopolitical centers such as China, India, or Russia, which also have this extractivist uh, tendency or extractivist development. So development serves as a fundamental organizing principle of both capitalism and its particular form of the welfare state. We say that in developing economies like India, the pursuit of development is a facade behind which the widespread acquisition of natural resources by large corporations is accomplished. Also, control of land and forests, mineral resources, and other commons is directed into the grasp of private business, diluting people's right to govern and protect them. So governments often claim that these measures are necessary to pursue the state's social development goals, Repeating that the environment and public health against social well-being in what we argue is a false dichotomy. I am Amulya Nidhi. I am from People's Health Movement India. And uh, I worked on, on uh, right to health and as well as the occupational health issues called silicosis and also the environmental health issues in India mainly. So as part of uh, People's Health Movement, uh, what we are uh, uh, talking about uh, the health issue, trying to link health issue with the larger survival issues, larger issue related to the laborers, issue related to the mining workers, issue related to the impact of environmental, lots of uh, uh, pollutions, impact of um, uh, dust industries, also as well as the polluting industries. So these are the issues which we, we as People's Health Movement trying to link not only in India, but also the globally as part of our thematic circle to link health issues with the larger environmental issues and also the climate change and other uh, issues uh, surround. So as uh, Erika has already uh, given the background of the whole, uh, our whole vision, our whole uh, purpose on, on this issue, here 
the whole approach and the struggles and the campaign which we are in uh, uh, into this and also we trying to uh, expand this and strengthen this whole struggle so first of all the most important aspect when we are working on the health issue we usually talk about health services or also talk about the access to medicines and access to some technology and uh, recently in the covid 19 we have a longer larger debate going on around covid 19 vaccines and other stuff but here it's also very important ki what are the our lifestyles the survival issue other survival issue as well as the larger impact of food security and larger impact on environmental hazards where we are uh, staying and where the, uh, our living standards so the environmental issues and the mining issues which we try to link it's a very larger issues if you for example we see the issue around occupational health hazard where we are working travels migrate to uh, the neighboring states and they get, get exposed to uh, dust the uh, the um, uh, mining dust and they uh, inhale the dust and they get exposed to issue called silicosis and this whole issue we start with uh, not only the workers who are working in this minings they are affected but also the surrounding citizens and surrounding area they are also going to get impact so as uh, phm what we trying to link this issues not only those who are going to be directly affected with these larger mining projects and larger uh, quartz factories and larger minings but also the surrounding residents the common citizens we also try to link them try to aware them and also try to mobilize them as a citizen if you see uh, not only the various um, uh, assemblies various uh, conventions un conventions Uh, human rights conventions where india and many other countries are part of the signatories are talking about the climate change talking about the environmental hazards and how can we protect the safe environment because environmental issue is going to be the larger global issues which has its impact the Im important also is to bring the solidarity among the various regions for example the mining uh, I, i usually say the big giants and big corporates from india are doing also mining in australia and also they are also trying to violate the various environmental norms not only in india also in australia also very important for example in various places where there are diamond minings there are there are gold minings where they, for example if you see there is a close linkage between india and south africa about the gold mining issues so here it's important what are the various protection also if you see about the laws also it's very important the uh, uh, law and the uh, policies which affect protect the environmental hazards and which are binding for this in mining industries has to be also shared we try to also share the experiences and we try to learn from each country to other country important for example if you see the nuclear power plants in india there are nuclear power plants is going to be built by the indian government is promoting so here the whole issue about we should learn we try to share the whole experience what happened to japan what happened to fukushima recently and then what are the larger impact of nuclear power plants in india among the tribals among the affected going to be the community so we work on the issues which has a direct impact on the people's life around health those who are already going to be affected with the larger mining corporations with these workers the safety of these workers and safety of the uh, individuals or employers those who are working in within this uh, hazardous industries as well as the surrounding Uh, people and surrounding citizens those who are largely going to be impact so both directly and indirectly impact we are going to link and we strengthen this campaign around these issues we also talks as part of our campaigns in the uh, global health watch we have uh, compiled a whole uh, case studies of various reasons what is happening to large big corporations are doing so it's important to challenge this through legally through using the different constitutions of the various countries as well as the policy issues and also to uh, force the government and to advocate with the government to uh, make uh, the policy which should safeguards the lives of the common citizens of various country so these are the kind of uh, use uh, in the coal thermal power plants and there there is a large number of flies is going to be affected with the surrounding communities so we are also trying to develop a community based monitoring tool so that the community can actually monitor the mining the impact of mining the dust levels as well as the impact of larger uh, environmental uh, impact in that area so we are trying to also facilitate trained the local activist 
create awareness among them to about their rights as to be a safe environment has a uh, place in 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 our own regions hi everyone i'm ben my pronouns are he him and i'm the campaign and program lead for climate and health at medact uh medact is a public health campaigning organization that's based in the uk and we work with the health community uh to organize so that everyone can access and achieve their human right to health um and i'm also part of the people's health movement extractive industries circle and i'm going to share a brief introduction into the green new deal and our campaign on health for a green new deal so building up from where erica and amulia um have have shared I want to start with a quote by Guppy Bola who was the former interim director at Medat who wrote in a recent brilliant report reimagining public health that the current health crisis points to a deeply rooted imbalance in our relationship with the natural world and with each other that will require transformative change to overcome the compounding crises of covid-19 and the climate emergency which have underscored and amplified long standing inequalities demonstrate the need for an economic transition centered on health and sustainability one that addresses the root causes of wealth power and income inequalities and prioritizes self determination and in that way an ambitious green new deal could drive a recovery that builds the regenerative infrastructures we need to live healthy lives in flourishing communities and that is what is like really at the heart of a green new deal is of dismantling those current systems that erica and amulia have described is to move away um from an economic system based on extraction and move towards systems that encourage us to thrive um so what is i suppose a green new deal and i suppose at this point it's important to say that there's no universal definition of a green new deal and i'll go into a little bit more about that in a moment but in the uk context it's about a 10 year action plan to rapidly decarbonize our economy it's a national government led program and it's not a single law or policy but it's an overarching agenda that contains multiple policies relating to health housing nature food transport jobs and it's big ambitious and it's large large in its scale and it needs to be in the uk um the the organization green new deal uk uh sets out kind of five key aspects uh to a green new deal that are to decarbonize the economy to create millions of new well paid secure unionized jobs to transform the economy from one of extraction to one that serves people and planet that we need to protect and restore vital habitats and carbon sinks and finally to promote global justice by supporting all people and countries to decarbonize quickly and fairly um there's a uh, one of kind of the forefront figures in the united states that has been making the links between the green new deal and public health um is uh, a doctor um called Dr Abdul El Said who is the former health director of Detroit and they powerfully said as a public health doctor i know that by eliminating the local consequences of fossil fuel emissions and lifting whole communities out of poverty the green new deal will also be a public health new deal and climate scientists suggest that we have less than 10 years now to act until the global consequences of climate change are irreversible but every day the consequences of pollution in the lives of countless children become irreversible and so we need to act now 
for our kids and for our globe. There are though, and it's important to highlight, the, the critiques of Green New Deals. Um, and there's a really powerful new publication uh, called Perspectives on a Global Green New Deal that Harpreet Kaur Paul and Dahlia Gabrielle brought together that brings together climate justice activists from across the world to reflect on, on what a vision for a Green New Deal looks like and what that means in practice. And they highlight in the introduction that neglecting the interdependent nature of both the climate crisis and responses to it risks creating a new era of green colonialism. And that really, I think, connects strongly to what Erica and, and Amelia were, were highlighting is that um, it's indigenous communities and people on the front line of extractive industries who face the disproportionate impacts from an economy that is based on extraction and economic growth at all costs. And so a, a just transition for countries in the global north cannot be brought, brought about through the continued harm and violence against communities that have been resisting for centuries against extraction and exploitation. Uh, and in a, um, in a separate publication, Harpreet Korpal, who brought together the, this work, says that a global Green New Deal must address the legacies and the impacts of slavery colonialism, discrimination and neoliberal policies that are deepening the impacts of climate change. And there's been some work that is in particular in the US that is trying to bring together those intersecting struggles. Um, for example, the, the Red Deal seeks to build on a, on a Green New Deal and tie indigenous liberation to the fight to save the planet. Uh, and there's also been work done by the Movement for Black Lives and the Gulf Coast Centre for Law and Policy. They've brought together this vision of a red, black and green New Deal. And that seeks to, to redistribute resources towards black and indigenous communities most harmed by the unjust environmental and climate practices and enact bold solutions to the climate crisis. So, yeah, so as the perspectives on a global green New Deal highlights, this global Green New Deal needs to be rooted in the principles of democratic ownership, gender justice, anti-racism and anti-colonialism. And so what are we trying to do at MEDACT and, and in the UK is that we're working on a campaign called Health for a Green New Deal that seeks to connect how a Green New Deal that tackles the root causes of climate breakdown underpinned by, by principles of public health can also address health inequities, uh, both on a local and global scale. And so Hope Health for a Green New Deal aims to build mass support in the health community for a transformative Green New Deal, to mobilize health workers and students to advocate uh, for a just transition to a zero carbon society. Um, and through the work that we're doing at MEDAPT, it, it's about organising with the health community and the health community kind of using, using their voice to advocate for, for the systemic and transformative change that we need. And in that sense, it's about building power uh, and socialising um, a Green New Deal and what that might mean in practice. But yeah, it will be interesting to discuss in when the IPHU's in person about what are the, the, the articulations of a Green New Deal that are happening in your context and how do we avoid um, how do we avoid a Green New Deal perpetuating the inequities and the injustices that are that our current economic system system is sorry is is founded upon and continues to perpetuate. 